Is this Pelagos 39 Tudor's best watch? I think it is certainly one of the more in-demand models at the moment, and there is always reasoning to the popularity. So let's break down the strengths and the weaknesses of this strong sports piece, and we'll begin with the positives. This is a very thin and comfortable watch. It is crafted out of grade 2 titanium, 39 millimeters in case diameter, only 47 millimeters in the lug to lug distance. And the best part, it is under 12 millimeters, just under 12 millimeters in overall height. And that makes a big difference on the wrist. So I like the thin profile. The lugs are 21 millimeters wide and the watch is light, only about 110 grams on the full bracelet. Now, Tudor also makes nice use of a sunray brushed ceramic bezel insert that has full loom indexing. So this just <laughs> shines in low light. It looks fantastic. It's nice and potent and it's long lasting as well. So I really like the loom and I really like the bezel action. It is crisp. It is pleasant to use. It is definitely a strength though I don't think it is quite as satisfying to use as a 60-click full-size Pelagos, but this is certainly top level. The bracelet has a good taper to it, and the clasp is a big positive in my opinion. There is a ceramic ball bearing detent system for the flip lock in the closure that is nice to use, very loud, very snappy. And the best part about this bracelet is the fact that the clasp has a T-fit quick adjust system. It is pretty similar to Rolex's glide lock, so it's intuitive, it's easy to use, there's a good amount of travel at play here. But uh, I also like the fact that this also has a dive extension built into the clasp. Each link is solid, it's held in place with a screw pin, and the watch does come with a complimentary rubber strap, which I do enjoy as a watch collector. I feel that it adds some extra value in addition to the added strap versatility. Now the movement is called the MT5400. It's another positive in my eye. It is a chronometer certified caliber with excellent specifications. It will have a free sprung balance, a silicon hairspring. It is anti-magnetic. The beat frequency is four Hertz and the movement has up to three days of power reserve. The best part though, is the fact that you will notice how smooth and how pleasant this is to hand wind and to operate. I would say that this crown and movement feels more premium. It feels less gritty than a standard current production Rolex crown and movement. So that's a nice thing. The overall design is another positive in my eyes. This pays homage to several retro Rolex and Tudor references. I adore the snowflake hands. I know not everybody feels the same way, but they are very legible. They're very distinctive. They're very cool looking. I also like the fact that this watch has a no date execution. The addition of a red line of text is another nice brand throwback. To me, this watch feels as though what Rolex originally intended their Submariners to be decades and decades ago. Semi-affordable, no frills, tool watches built to blend into the background and be perfectly capable. Nowadays, the Rolex Submariner is still highly capable and highly enjoyable, but the crowd who buys them more often than not, they put them in a safe as opposed to getting out there and using it as a tool watch is supposed to be used on an adventure. Not all owners do that. Some owners definitely wear the heck out of their Submariners, but I think a lot see a sub as a pure status luxury symbol and not necessarily a tool watch. This Pelagos 39 definitely feels like a tool watch like the original Submariners were intended to be used as. Now, here is the best strength in my opinion. You consider the overall package here, everything the Tudor brings to the table, and then you look at the retail price. This is pretty affordable as far as luxury watches go, $4,600 full retail, and that is after the recent uh, Tudor retail price increases. And I've talked to a decent amount of watch collectors who expressed to me similar sentiments that I agree with, that our money as watch collectors just doesn't seem to go as far these days. I think gone are the days of value-rich luxury models. I do think that Tudor really is the last brand in the entry-level luxury space the traditional brand that still offers a solid value proposition. And I don't think this will always be the case 
with Tudor. But as of the time of recording this video, I think consumers really feel like they are getting their money's worth and not overspending when they buy a luxury product like this Tudor Pelagos 39. So that all being said, is this Tudor's best current offering? Allow me to present a couple other things to consider. I don't feel that this Pelagos 39 is for everyone. With the market trending to smaller and smaller watches, I mean, Tudor just released a 37 millimeter Black Bay to good success. Uh, I think this Peli 39 won't appeal to collectors with more substantive sport watch preferences. And I do include myself in that grouping. I can definitely pull this off. I do think it looks nice on my wrist, but I don't know, maybe it's the lightweight nature of the titanium paired with my larger body frame and wrist, but it just feels a tad too diminutive on my 7.25 inch wrist. So ideally, I would like a Pelagos FXD that size when it comes to uh, you know a sports piece from Tudor. Uh, so the FXD wears larger. It's a 42 millimeter watch, but it has an even more exciting looking bezel in low light scenarios. It's also thinner than a full size 42 millimeter standard Pelagos. I think the drawback with the FXD, at least in my eyes, is there is no lovely bracelet option. And that is something that I think is a major strength of the Pelagos family. You know, it's evident here on this Peli 39, as well as the full-sized, uh, you know, 42 millimeter option. So tell me if you can relate or, or if I'm not alone in this sentiment, but my ideal Tudor diver would be a mixture of what is currently offered from the brand. So give me the thinness, give me the movement, give me the versatility of this 39 design uh, but also give me the size and the bezel of the FXD and then give me the bracelet slash clasp quality of the full-size Pelagos 42. I think that conglomeration of elements would be a fantastic tool watch. Now, another thing to consider, the Pelagos has always, you know, they've always been offered only in grade two titanium. But imagine if Tudor did a stainless steel option for those that prefer the Pelagos design and elements to the Black Bay, which is done in stainless steel. And you look at Tudor, they have experimented with ceramic, with silver, with bronze, even with gold in the Black Bay family. And I would love to see that way of thinking uh, just injected into this very compelling Pelagos family that currently is just done in one material. Now, overall, a solid argument could definitely be made that this Pelagos 39 is Tudor's best current watch. I don't think you're going to get vehement you know, arguments in the opposite direction. I think many collectors would agree with that statement, perhaps not a majority, but certainly a significant grouping. And that speaks to the strength of this design and this release. It, it is a very strong model. So that being said, the question becomes how long will this watch be held in this high regard, this high esteem? What exciting Tudor releases await us collectors in future years? Will we see a return to larger watches? Will we see an expansion of different materials and colors, sizes and complications? I am looking forward to the future here. Let me know what you think and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching today. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel for more varied horological content. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you almost hit 60 there. <laughs>